Well, we're in the Big Hole Valley of Montana, near the town of Wisdom, Pioneer Mountains in the distance. This is a very high valley, about 6,000 feet. Winters are pretty hard here. We just stopped to throw away some garbage. <laughs> and uh, we're at the local transfer station, but it's an interesting place because right next to it is a firing range. That fellow right there in the pickup truck is shooting. And the targets are just right there. <laughs> Linda said, this is a multi-use facility. We didn't bring any extra ammo or we'd be over there practicing too. This is something that's very unique to the Big Hole Valley. This is called a beaver slide, and it's a way of stacking hay. So it makes a very compact, very wind resistant uh, uh, haystack. Something left over from the old days, but they're still using them today. Just a quick stop here at the Wisdom Post Office so Linda can mail out a sticker. <laughs> This is the little town of Wisdom in the Big Hole Valley. It gets pretty popular in the summertime, but that's because of all the fishing along the Big Hole River and the Wise River up here. And there's some great places to camp too in this area. I know people from the Big Hole Valley here, and let me tell you, uh, when it comes to farming and ranching, these are hard-working folks. They have a pretty short summer. Life, is, life can be kind of tough up here because it's high. But uh, the Big Hole Valley, I think it's kind of a special place. One thing that Linda and I have uh, featured before in our, our videos is the uh, Big Hole Battlefield down here where the Nez Pierce um, fought a, a big battle. battle. And, uh, and there's also the um, Gibbons Pass that... Uh, Colonel Gibbon uh, chased the Nez Pierce, or he was following the Nez Pierce over when he attacked them the next day. They thought they were safe here. I've covered that in a previous video, but there's also beautiful places to camp up here and, and many places to camp in national forest around the Big Hole Valley. There's also at the south end of the Big Hole Valley is uh, Bannock, ghost town. Bannock used to be a, um, the capital of Montana, and it is, it's the best preserved ghost town you'll ever find. A very interesting, interesting place to stop. And also near here is Coolidge Ghost Town, which we've also featured in a video earlier. You can look those up, look at our, our list of videos. But we're just traveling through here today. We're on our way to Darby, Montana, just to get some supplies. And then we're gonna go find a place to camp after that. Maybe someplace to eat. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> this is the Big Hole Valley. And where it got its name from is the Native Americans called a valley that's surrounded by mountains on all sides. They call it a hole in their native language, of course. Well, we're in Darby, Montana, which is a small town, kind of like a tourist town, I guess. And... Uh, don't know where to go to eat, so you just take your chances, you know. We don't stop in and eat very often, but uh, we're going to do that today. And just how do you choose where to eat? There's a saloon and cafe. There's a bar and grill. Behind us was a big cat cafe, but nobody's in it, so... <laughs> This one looks promising. Are you guys coming in? Yes. It's actually too dark for me to read the menu. <laughs> I gotta pull out my flashlight. So what did you order? I ordered the burrito with spicy pork. Yeah. Oh, what did you order? I ordered the cheeseburger and fries. I'm playing it safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big burrito. <laughs> I think we're going to go half half. Yep. Let me see what's inside. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. My cheeseburger don't look bad either. 
Well, here's how that worked out. I ordered that cheeseburger and underneath the other, the bun was just a whole pile of lettuce and tomato and pickles and onions. And it turned out to be a huge cheeseburger. We split it, didn't touch the burrito. And now we're bringing the burrito home for dinner tonight. <laughs> That's, oh gee. <laughs> I think the burrito weighs at least five pounds. <laughs> no, but it's heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. <laughs> well, we managed to get everything done here in town, including propane. Groceries, propane, lunch. We're good. Now we just got to try to find a place to camp. But our, I think the area we're heading to is um, just prime for that. Well, this is the Painted Rocks Campground. And it's southwest of Darby, Montana, which is uh, well south of Missoula, down the Bitterroot Valley. This is a large campground, and we're the only ones in it. And this is the second campground we've stayed at this week, that large campgrounds, where we're the only ones in it. However, when we woke up this morning, it was 30 degrees, so that's probably why. It was 37 degrees inside the trailer, and it's my job to get up in the morning and, and light the stove. I don't know how I ended up with that job. I don't remember applying for it, <laughs> but it's mine. Now at this point, I don't know why they call this Painted Rocks uh, State Park, but um, this campground, there is a huge reservoir here. This being the middle of October, the reservoir, uh, of course, is really low. Uh, I guess it's uh, something they do here is they run ATVs and motorcycles on the lake bottom. And here's the rules for that. And this is this would be the boat ramp. I don't know if, if come springtime this reservoir is full. I'm, I'm sure I know it's pretty high come spring with all the runoff and everything, but this is what it looks like now. But this is huge. And you can see that there's tire tracks and it'd be fun to ride down there with all the, it's all undulating and everything. So it'd be a real fun ride as long as you don't hit one of those stumps. The West Fork of the Bitterroot River uh, runs through on the other side here, just on the other side of this uh, reservoir bottom here. <laughs> well, our plan for the day is we don't really have one. But we're going back into Darby to pick up a few things that we forgot yesterday. And then we're heading down through the eastern part of Idaho. And I know that's campgrounds all the way down through there. It's um, highway, number, highway number 93. So that's where we're going today. Today, And I don't know where we end up. There'll be some campground down in there somewhere, I'm sure. If we're lucky, we'll find a place to boondock. And how are you this morning? <laughs> good, how are you? <laughs> I'm always good. We're stopped along a spot called Slate Creek. Hey, what's the name of this valley anyway? Is it Painted Rocks Valley? I don't know. Anyhow, we're stopped here. Uh, there's a Slate Creek is down here and we need to uh, refill water jugs. And also, um, we're having a problem with the with the negative ground on our trailer and I need to crawl underneath and clean up that ground. The lights are flickering, so we need to fix that. Yeah. This ground actually looks pretty good. No corrosion. It's clean. So it must be somewhere else, the problem. Yeah. There's the grounds up inside though, on the other end of the, the ground bus itself. And I'll check those now. Well, we're still working on that problem. The lights only flicker when the 12 volt compressor refrigerator is on. Now our interior lights in the trailer ground through the trailer frame itself, which is not an ideal situation. 
It would be, and that was the way we just tapped into the stock lighting circuit when we outfitted the trailer. And uh, basically it's better if you, instead of just a power lead going to the lights and then a ground wire attaching to the frame, it's better if that ground wire comes all the way back to a negative bus or a junction where all of the ground wires are attached and then from there to the trailer frame. It just makes it easier to keep track of what's going on. And yeah, you can see on the left side there, there's a, um, the positive bus, and that's where all the positive wires go. And then over here on the left side, on the right side, I mean, is the negative bus. And all the negative wires from everything else in the trailer besides the lights goes to here. And then there's one wire that goes down to the frame from there. That's the negative bus. But anyways, that problem still persists, and when the refrigerator is on, the lights flicker. If any of you know a way to stop that through the use of a diode or something like that, would you leave a comment down below, please? I'd appreciate it. This must be why they call this Painted Rocks. This canyon is just beautiful. And this is Highway 473, taken off just south of Darby, Montana. And there's lots of national forest access up in here and campgrounds. Nice place.